I am pretty gutted about that. You're in it whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to hide from the video. <laughs> so I'm with Grant, whether he likes it or not. I'm the reason they keep uh, coming back. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we, if we come down to a silly, I'm camping, it turns out Grant's not. And um, this is probably our last opportunity to get any of the meteors and the Besides meteor shower, we've tried a few times around the Brecon Beacons, and every time we've been up there, it's been uh, a washout with cloud and stuff like that. And damn the silly, the forecast for tonight didn't look that bad. It looked about 30% cloud coverage, and the moon's quite small. It's quite early stages into uh, there was a new moon last week, so it's, that sets at 11, half 11, I think, half 11 the moon set. So yeah. So, Hopefully this is our last chance to get any meteors. So we're gonna pitch up 10. We're just walking down towards Rosilli Worm's Head now. It's quite windy, so not really ideal to be pitching a tent. Uh, but yeah, fingers crossed. Gotta give it a go. Desperate to get some of these uh, meteor photographs. I think, yeah, it's, it's only got about an hour to move around. Where are you? I can't see a dicky, but there you are. Yeah. So at the minute, the Milky Way is over there. Um, yeah, so if we went off to the left... Give it an hour and it will move into position. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not quite what we anticipated doing. We actually went to the bulb for an hour. <laughs> we thought, you know, what's the point in getting the tent set up and, uh, and sitting there waiting for the Milky Way and we could just go and have a beer. So yeah, that's what we did. We went and had a pint. Uh, now it is uh, 20 to 11. So the Milky Way is just off to my left. So it's over there. And um, we're gonna give it an hour. And hopefully, well actually we've looked at the app and the app says by about half past two, it's gonna be lined up with the end of Worm's Head. So that'd be quite cool if we managed to get that. Uh, and it's, it, it's a remarkably clear sky actually. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's far clearer. The, the app actually said about 30% co cloud cover and it's far less than that in the minute. So come three o'clock, probably is gonna be more likely 30%. So we're gonna try and get the best we can at the minute. It's quite windy actually, good grief. Uh, we're gonna get the tent set up down here and wait hold that there like that um, and wait uh, for the Milky Way to rotate a little bit oh drop that um, just wait for Grant to come back he's gone for a wander off the cliff in the dark very handy do you find anything yeah I mean I find after the west that I don't know we'll have a so we're gonna pitch the tent here are we yeah because if you come up this way a little bit it's quite sheltered in the first bit okay there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of protection from a bank that comes up here awesome and then if you go a bit further so we're right not are we not on the edge now we're not I, I don't think so <laughs> Ah. Splosh. But uh, and I've got a meteor already. You got a meteor? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, fantastic. This yeah, is a good. this is a good night. So the wind's picking up, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we've just got the tent up. We've left the cameras over there doing a time lapse, and the moon is still out. How long? How long's the no, moon got the moon's left? Moon set now. Hey, has it? Yeah, it's gone. Oh yeah, it's twenty past eleven, so the moon has just set. Um, wind's picked up now, so I don't know whether that means clouds are coming. Uh, but yeah, we've got the tents up. We're gonna um, give it an hour or two to leave the, the cameras on. I've got the camera set. I've got the Fuji X-Pro2 with the 12mm um, Samyang at f2.2. And I've got the, because the moon was up at the time of, of setting the camera, I've got, um, I've got the ISO set to 800. Uh, I've recently discovered that the, uh, the cameras, a lot of new cameras these days are what they call ISO invariant. So you can leave the camera at uh, say ISO 800 and brighten it up to the equivalent as if you would ISO 3200 for Milky Way or something like that. Uh, and you don't lose any quality and obviously the, the dynamic range is better and um, the highlights you can recover. So you've got a lot more control. So yes, when you look at the back of the camera, you'll see a darker image. Uh, but when you get back to post, you'll be able to brighten it up as if you've taken it at 3200 ISO. I have to give full credit to Alan Wallace on that one because I didn't know that until I seen his vlog recently. So um, he's actually done a really, really good um, 
blog, Alan Wallace has. He's a local photographer in Brecon Beacons, specialises in astrophotography. So full credit to him for that because I didn't know about that. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to Alan's blog about uh, inver uh, in invariant ISO, I think it's called. Uh, so yeah, basically a lot of new cameras. Going right back to the Fuji X-T1, you can actually take a photograph at either 200 to 400, which is the native, and then from four, uh, 640 all the way up to 6400 ISO invariant. So yeah, it's just a good idea to take a took my first photograph at 3200 ISO, 20 second exposure, f2.2, just to get the composition right. And then uh, once I was happy with that, set the actual time lapse at ISO, ISO 800, um, 2.2, 20 second exposure for 300 or 400 photographs. I'm um, just leaving it run now that the moon's gone down. Should have got the moon going down as well, should be quite cool. Hopefully we'll get a few meteors. Uh, and then yeah, so later on in post I'll be able to lift the exposure and keep the uh, the dynamic range, keep the highlights and keep everything that you would do on a normal 800 ISO photograph. So hopefully that improves the uh, the quality of the image as well. So right, yeah, gonna I've got the other camera with me, I've got the Sony, uh, I've got a 35mm 1.4 with me uh, with that. So I'm going to try and look for another composition, give it another hour or so before the Milky Way is directly behind Worm's Head. And then that should be really cool. We've got a bit to kill, so get the coffee on. I cannot believe we're standing here and with the naked eye you can see the flipping Milky Way. It's unbelievable. And Mars. You can see Mars. In awe. It's incredible. Oh. oh, I hope that's on camera. That was an awesome one. Just Really? Yeah. Straight over there where the Milky yeah. Way is? We're not going to see another shooting star now, are we? No. It's oh, not going to happen. Not that was, that not, was the last one. Last grain of sand. Oh, it's still amazing to be able to see the Milky Way standing here. Mars, Milky Way. Phenomenal. I never knew you could actually see the Milky Way with the naked eye. I've never been anywhere that you, it's been that dark when the Milky Way's been out and the moon's gone down that you could actually see the Milky Way. I'm sure somewhere like Utah, I've read that you can actually like start to see a bit, bit of colour. You can see the well. colour in it, yeah. Because yeah. that's really clear, isn't it? Yeah. And this is still, this is still light, isn't it? Are you still light yeah, pollution can from see. the over that way? Yeah. Caravans are a little annoying. <laughs> Home for a power cut. It's amazing. And to think that it's moving over slowly over there. Providing the Fuji doesn't run out of battery, that'll make a nice time lapse. <laughs> okay, so you know, I mean, you remember we were in the beacons the other night, you remember the size on some of the fireballs that were coming through the sky? Yeah. There, right? So those meteors, apparently, are between the size of a grain of sand and right. a pea. And they make all that light? Yeah. That's incredible. That big flash that I've seen, I'll never forget that. That must have been the size of, I don't know, a car. You'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. got, well, it has to be a big car. It's, but the no. amount of light that came off it was phenomenal. Just a pee. No, you're taking the pee. It's not <laughs> just a pee at all. Well, I think this is one of the most random nights I've ever spent in my life. Grant's just left, but very kindly left me with a bottle of Sky Black, which is beer, ale, I think it is, from the Isle of Sky. Um, very kind of him, very much appreciate it tonight. Uh, the Milky Way has moved its way pretty much around into the frame now into the uh, just about into into the uh, 18 mil of the lens so we're probably going to get start getting the milky way moving across now uh, hopefully grant reckons he picked up a few shooting stars of the uh, the footage he checked on his camera before he went uh, i haven't looked at mine so uh, it'd be really awesome if we got some shooting stars um yeah so we're gonna have a chill out for an hour leave this shoot um, it's still on the same settings 20 seconds uh, iso 800 f 2.2 um, yeah, quite excited to see what it's going to be like. The wind has picked up somewhat chronic now. It's, uh, it's really, really windy. So I'm using the little vlog camera here as the, <laughs> for the audio. Uh, and I'm filming the Sony uh, 1.4 uh, on the Samyang lens. Uh, 50, I think 51, 52,000 ISO, uh, a quarter of a second exposure. So that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. I've got the camera really, really well. I've, I've spread the, the legs of the tripod quite low to the ground, making sure the tripod is really, really solid. Um, um, the, I'm glad I did it. It wasn't very windy when I did it. Um, I just felt just in case the wind picked up and I'm really glad I did now because the wind is absolutely, well, it's gusts, really strong gusts. But what a phenomenal night, just sitting here. I mean, every, 
I have seen fair few uh, meteors, Perseid meteors, um, little ones, nothing, nothing massive. Um, but they're always in a different direction. I have seen a fair few though. It's been really nice, very relaxing. Uh, shame the winds uh, interrupting a little bit, but it is very nice. It's surreal. I've come back into the tent because it's mental windy out there. But uh, before he left, he did leave me with one of his favourite bottles of beer, Sky Black, which is an ale, I believe, from uh, from the Isle of Skye. It's absolutely gorgeous, actually. I'm very, very grateful for that tonight, mate. Thanks very much. Uh, the wind has picked up absolutely ridiculous. The tent is getting blown to bits. When I pitched the tent, the wind was going that way, um, so it wasn't so bad. But now, the wind seems to be coming front on, so this side of the... I'm going to have to keep my foot wedged against the front of the tent because um, it is getting a hammer in. Uh, I've left the camera out there doing its time lapse, the Fuji X Pro 2, um, and uh, yeah, I've just changed the battery on it, so it's done. It's done a couple of hours, uh, at least an hour and a half, I think, on the one battery, 20 second exposure. So it's um, yeah, it's done all right. So I've put a new battery in it, set it for another 300 photographs. The Milky Way now is is lined up. Well, it it's about half an hour, I'd say. What time is it? It's one o'clock. So we said two o'clock. So it's an hour away from lining up with Worm's Head. So I'm gonna give it another hour. There's, what I did. What I did stupidly though, while we were out there, I left the, the doors open, both this one and that one, of the tent. I've come back and there's loads of spiders and flies and all sorts in here. <laughs> it's horrible, so they keep flying into me and hit me on the head, so yeah. I don't really want these, I don't want to share the tent with these creepy crawly things tonight. I'm not really happy about that. Um, so I'm trying to get them out of the tent. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it's horrifically windy out there, it's gusty, so every now and again it's just poof, crazy. Uh, but it's so clear, the sky is unbelievable. You can see the stars, you can see the Milky Way with the bare eye, it's unbelievable. You just lie there, it's taking all. You can see the, the whole arch of the Milky Way going over. And there is a little bit of light pollution over there uh, at, the, at the top of Rasili. There's a, a, a restaurant bar and there's a caravan site there. A bit, they've got lights on there. So. Uh, so I'm using an app called Photopills, which a lot of you guys are, will be familiar with. It's a really, really good app for planning and um, it's, uh, it's got an augmented reality app on there, part of it, so you can sort of see exactly where the uh, Milky Way is going to be and it's, it's literally just off there, so it's just sort of about my 10 o'clock now, so as soon as it gets in front, straight on in front of me, it's going to be absolutely superb in line with the, uh, with the worm's head. Really, really excited about that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to chill out for an hour now and uh, go out and see, the, see if the, the camera hasn't been blown off the edge of the cliff in about an hour. So I'll see you again in a few minutes. Right, I don't know what to do. This tent does not feel like it's built for this. This is seriously strong wind. There's just one bar on the top here which is just sort of getting pushed down and I'm pretty sure that, that could easily snap and I don't feel confident in it at all. If I was in my Crocs I wouldn't be worried but this tent I don't think that feels like a 50 mile an hour gust out there and this wall is getting a battering. So I'm probably going to pack up and get back to the car. I don't feel safe in here. It's probably fine. I'm probably overreacting. It's just this side and that bar up there is just quite... Oh! Like that. 